In this video, I'll go through the process of creating the snow and the rocket pack fire and smoke from the Rocket D video using Particular in After Effects. So what I'd like to do now is just take a quick look at, at how to set up the two different types of particles that I have in this scene. One, which is the snow, and then the other is the jet particles. So I'm going to create another composition, and this will be the example particles. Oops, and we'll put setup. Setup, okay. Let's create a new composition. I'll make it 1920 by 1080. There we go. And I'm going to start by putting a solid in there, just a black one, make comp size, and then add a new adjustment layer. And then I'll put the actual particles in there. I'm just gonna get rid of all this stuff. I don't need it. Make this window a little bigger. Okay, great. Make this fit a little bit more. There we go. And window. Need effect controls open. Put that in there. Okay, so let's enable the trap code particular. Okay, so when you start with particular, you get these really, really simple and boring particles. And actually, maybe I'm going to add a camera too. Good to start with the camera. And again, I'm going to use that really long lens because we're going for sort of a telephoto look. Let's start with the emitter. So uh, this one, we're going to create the snow really quickly or try to be really quickly. So the first thing I want to do is create a box emitter. I don't want my snow coming from a point. I want it coming from a box. I want that box to be quite large. We'll start with 2000 for now. You can always make it bigger and maybe 2000 deep. So now we have particles emitting both up and down. So to get the downward motion, I'm going to go into physics and gravity and I'll set gravity up so that these are falling. Let's just preview really quickly and see how fast this is happening. Now they're a little bit heavy looking. So let's, uh, the next thing to do is let's just pull this emitter way up. I actually don't want to see, let's see how fast those snowflakes are falling. Okay, those snowflakes are clearly made of stones and sand. So let's reduce the amount of gravity to 100. Okay, that's still a very wet snow. But we're gonna go all the way down to 50. Now the only thing that'll do is really just slow down how long it takes for them to get into frame, but that's okay. Okay, that's a little better. So now I want to increase their lifespan. So let's move, let's scrub forward. And you can see they're terminating halfway down the screen. I'm gonna go into the particle here. Let's just get rid of emitter for now. And put the lifespan up to 10 seconds. So that as they fall, they're filling the whole screen. And then maybe what we'll do is we'll go into the, go to emitter. And there's some emission extras. I'm gonna do a pre-run of 100. And what that'll do is that I'm not gonna start with no particles in the scene if I do a pre-run of 100. So I automatically have snowflakes falling. Now, as you can see, they're not falling in a very interesting way. They're just falling straight down. First of all, I think the velocity is fine. It might be a little bit fast, but I'm gonna leave it for now. The What I will do though, is I'm going to go into the physics here and I'm going to add a couple of, uh, some different properties to the air. One thing I can do is increase the spin. And when that does, it sort of create this random twirling motion of the snowflakes, which is a lot more like snowflakes move. They sort of move up and down. They move all over the place. Obviously, you can increase this to as high as you want. The higher you increase it, the more chaotic things will go. So I think 100 is pretty good. The other thing you can do is create a turbulent field. It's good to visualize these because it doesn't make a lot of sense if you don't. Sometimes it can be hard to understand them and I can't see them at the moment. So let's go to custom view. See if I can find that field. Oh, I can't even see the particle generator at the moment. Let's go back into the camera. See if I can, oh, they're, they're in there somewhere. So I'm gonna pull the camera back a little bit. Maybe I'll see, there it is. It's up here at the top where the actual emitter is. 
So you can actually see the turbulent field here, the markers. I'm going to put this down to half. I don't need it so high. Actually, we can go to, down to a third. So now we can actually see the turbulent field. So I want it to affect position. I don't want it to affect size. So if I put this way up, you can see that there's quite a bit of noise going on here. So let's just see how that looks. And I'm finding it's moving them way too much. You see, they look more like bugs. They, they're, they're not reacting in a wind-like way. They're reacting in a self-directed, self-motivated way. So what I need to do is reduce the scale way down. So I put it usually down to like something like 1. And you can see what this does is create a much more subtle change in the actual positioning. You could put it up a little higher if you want. But you want to do it until it just looks natural. Might help you to watch some snow falling videos uh, to get a sense of what is actually going on. But I feel like this is pretty good. So there's just a couple more little things that we want to play with in order to make some sweet snow. So there's one other, well, a couple other things to do. One will be to actually create some wind on the x axis. And that's far too much wind. Let's go 1,000. Still way too much wind. That's a hurricane. Let's go 100. Just trying to give this a little bit of a drift. As you can see, the turbulence follows the wind because I have move with wind set to 80%. So, and that's that's by default. And what I can do if I want is I can increase the air resistance, which will make it less reactive to everything which could be helpful. And let's, I'm going to decrease that wind just a little bit. Well, uh, maybe I'll leave that wind the way it is right now. And then what I'll do to keep it in frame is just pull the emitter over. So just move the emitter over. And there we go. Because we just want roughly the center. So I'm going to pull this over even a little more. There we go. And that should give me what I'm looking for. Now, the very last thing that I do usually with snow is we want to get inside of the snow here. The very last thing I do is just change the particle type. So currently the particle is just a little blob. Uh, so let's go into the particle settings. And I want to put the size random all the way up. They're all different sizes. And opacity random, put it up a little bit. Not too, too far. It's not, it's not as important. And change it from sphere to a little cloudlet. And I'll decrease the size a little bit. It's just tiny little guys. There we go. And now it should look a lot like snow. There we go. And let's just turn off the visualized fields. So let's go to physics. Air. And just make sure that visualized fields is off. So now we should have some pretty awesome looking snow that we can actually get inside of. Okay. So let's just move further in. You can see that we're actually seeing the snow. Which I think looks pretty good. It looks pretty believable. Obviously, it's not as good as if you actually filmed real snow, but it's pretty decent. And if we enable, in the rendering mode, we enable motion blur. Depth of field is by default. Oops. Let's go to motion blur. And I'm just going to put it on instead of worrying about the comp settings and put it to 120. And so now I just have a little bit of motion blur on that. What I do, what I like to do is with the emitter is I like to put a random generation on the actual particles per second. I put this to wiggle and then wiggle, I don't know, 0 0.2 times per second. And I make the variation quite significant. So like 500, you can be crazy here if you want. And what will happen is you'll get these intermittent dumps of snow. Like this is a little bit too high. Uh, the variation because the snow will all but stop at some times, but as you can see, it's all the way down to like 200. Let's make maybe set this to 300 instead and set the default number up to 200. Actually, let's set it to 300 because we never wanted to get down to zero. So let's put it to let's put it to 500. There we go, with lo nice and lots of snow. And let's try this one more time. And let's maybe we'll start in the middle of here somewhere so we've got the wind, everything taking full effect. And it may be hard to notice the the full change in the volume of the snow but on a subconscious level it's actually there and you, you will see it it will be happening 
You had some snow falling there. The other thing you can do is add to the actual wind on, let's say, on the x-axis here. We can also add a wiggle to that. So put that at 0.5 and maybe just put it to, what is the wind at, 100? So we'll put it to 25. And then that will affect the actual wind so it's not always going at the same speed. I didn't do as much of this in the in the actual animation because it was so short. But if you're going to be looking at snow for a long time, this can be really helpful. So there you go. We have all kinds of snow happening. And once you have your depth of field enabled on the actual camera, so let's go to the camera here. Camera options, depth of field on. And let's put the aperture way up. Maybe increase that focus distance a little further. So once you have this on, and we're, let's turn to something a little more interesting like hexagon. And we'll put this to half. Let's put it to full maybe to really showcase what's going on here. So in here we can start adding our depth of field. Put this to 6,000. Try to see where the camera is at. Let's take its position into account here. It is at negative 1,500. So we want to maybe put 3,000. Oops. Focus distance down to 3,000. Okay, so we can see that there's some in totally in focus. Uh, I've got hexagon set at iris roundness. We can put to like whatever, 50% if you want. So you can play with these settings to really get a sense of what's going on. Now this will severely slow down the rendering time. And this is a really high level of depth of field. Let's actually reduce that aperture by quite a bit. It's it's a bit too high. But now what we'll get is we'll get some snowflakes that are blurry as they're in front and then others that are sharper as they go further away. You can continue to play with it like I did in the actual animation as I created little fish tanks of particles. So this could be particle mid-ground or snow mid-ground. And I just would duplicate them. So now we have, we'll make this one particle background. Now it does, it is going to hit your processor pretty hard once you start creating a lot of different particle generators. But on this one, I can position it way back. Maybe that's a little too far. Oh, the last thing, sorry, the one other thing we need to do is actually the visibility. And I need to change it to, oops, sorry, is the rendering. We need to change it to transfer mode and change it to normal, which will make it transparent and sort of overlay over other particles. So I position this a little too far back. So let's put this at 500. Or let's go 2,000. Okay, so now I have two layers. So 3,000. There we go. And I'll reduce the count on this one just for now. Okay, so now we have two layers of snow happening. And what you can do with that is just you can put characters or things in between. Or if you want new solid, we'll create a new solid. We'll make it the comp size. And this will be sort of like a, a little fog layer. Let's go layer, new, solid. So, okay. And I'll just put this in between to sort of make a foggy layer. Transparency, 25. So now you can see that the snow, there's a division. You can also, uh, you can also set your, your, your far settings, your far back settings uh, in the actual visibility and change how far back they go and, and what happens when they start getting further and further away. And maybe change the random seed to 5,000. So that'll switch all our particles around so that they're not actually exactly the same as one another. You can... Make the emitter size on the z-axis on the far back one quite a bit deeper. So like set it to 5,000 and you'll get a lot more depth out of it. So I don't know if this will read on the actual screen, but as you can see, we're sort of flying through the snow a little bit here. So we have some decent snow. You can obviously work on this. You could also, if you want, replace the cloudlets with actual snow sprites. And those sprites can be used in place of the cloudlets to make even more interesting looking snow. If you are interested to see how the rest of this bird was put together, make sure you check out the other Rocket D tutorial videos. If you like what ED Films is doing and want to stay up to date on the latest developments and tutorials, please show your support by liking us on Facebook.